to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. By inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Peter said, Baptism does now also save us. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 21. We welcome you to our second study on the in this series on the purposes of baptism. What's the purpose of baptism in the Bible? Why should one be baptized? There are a host of people who say baptism is not essential and not important. But today we're asking, what does the Word of God say on the purposes of baptism in the New Testament? Stay tuned as we're going to open our Bible together and see what God says. Welcome to the Gospel of Christ program. My name is Ben Bailey, and we're so glad that you've joined us for our broadcast today. Today's lessons are being brought to you by members of the Church of Christ worldwide. Those members of the Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their worship assembly. If you've got a Bible question or there's something you'd like to study, they'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God together with you. Also, at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your study of the Word of God. You can log on to our website, thegospelofchrist.com, and all our Bible study material is free of charge and available to you. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, whether on DVD or CD, we'd love to send that to you. You can fill out a media request form from our website, or you can call us toll-free at 1-855. 458-3905. On our website, we have a host of Bible study material, including transcripts, study question, question and answers, and a variety of study materials that would help you in your study of the Word of God. Friend, at the Gospel of Christ, we're concerned about the salvation of souls. That's our main emphasis. We're not concerned about your wallet. We're not concerned about hidden agendas. We just simply want to help men and women know the Word of God and to go to heaven. And so as we transition to our study today, we hope that you'll get your Bible out and have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God together. One of the clear purposes of baptism that we find in the Scripture is simply to obey God. I want to please God. I want to obey Him. And Jesus demands our obedience. Do you remember Matthew 7, verse number 21? Jesus said, It's not everybody who pays lip service, but those who do the will of the Father who are going to be saved. And friend, I want to direct your attention in this series of lessons as we're thinking about the purposes of baptism. We want to encourage you to get your Bible, have it ready to look at these verses with us so that you can read it in your own Bible and see for yourself this is what God teaches on this subject. Would you get your Bible and look with me in Acts chapter 10 verse number 48 to pur a purpose of baptism that we find in the words of Peter here is simply to obey God. Verse number 47, Peter answered, Can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized or receive the Holy Spirit just as we have? Now watch verse 48. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they asked him to stay a few days. If baptism is a command of God, can I forsake, can I reject a command of God and be pleasing to Him? Well, of course not. Jesus said, if you love me, what? Keep my commandments. John 14, verse 15. Luke 7, verse 28 and 29, certain Jewish elite who rejected baptism also rejected the will of God for themselves. And so if Jesus is the author of eternal salvation to all who obey Him, and if baptism is a clear command of God, then friend, one of the purposes is to obey God's commands to be pleasing to Him and to honor Him with my life and with yours. Another purpose that we find in the New Testament for baptism is it's central to the Lord's great commission to His disciples. 
in Mark 16, 15, and 16, Jesus said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel unto every creature. Matthew 28, verse 18, Go unto all nations with the gospel, Jesus said. What did Jesus say next? He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the Great Commission is, God wants all people to hear about Jesus, hear about God's love, and have salvation. What a loving, merciful God we serve. God wants all men to be saved. 1 Timothy 2, 4. God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. That's the, the power of the Great Commission. And everybody needs that chance to hear it. But tied directly to the Great Commission to go teach the gospel is to teach them how to be saved. It's part of God's Great Commission in that it is the essence of God's plan of salvation in Christ. How does one get in Christ? How do we have our sins washed away? When I've heard about Jesus, what do I do to get into Him? He who believes and is baptized will be saved. Now friend, we mentioned then another purpose of baptism in the New Testament. That is, when I obey the gospel, I become a part of the spiritual family of God, the spiritual family of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Remember Matthew 28, verse number 18, Go into all the world, teach the gospel unto every creature, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things commanded you. And so when I'm baptized, I'm baptized into the name, the power, the authority, and into the family of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God becomes my Father. Galatians 4 verse 4, I can look up to heaven and say, Our Father who art in heaven. Matthew 6 verse 9, Jesus our Savior and the one who made the great sacrifice. And, and we have the Holy Spirit of truth whose words we follow in this life. And so what a, a wonderful privilege I have to become a part of the family of Almighty God and have all the blessings and privileges that go along with that. We also mentioned that in the New Testament, we find part of the purpose of baptism is simply to become a disciple or follower of Christ. Uh, do you remember the words again of John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32? Jesus said, If you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. How do I continue in the word of Christ and become a disciple of His? Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Matthew 28, verse 19. Those who gladly receive... His Word were baptized, and Acts 2 verse 42 through 47 says, The Lord added to the church daily. Those are being saved. How do I become a follower of Christ? By doing what Christ says, which includes obeying God's plan of salvation as seen in the New Testament. Friend, we also want to mention that baptism is the point at which my faith actually becomes active and I have a saving faith. Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9 says, By grace are we saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. Don't get me wrong. We understand without the grace of God, salvation isn't even available. By grace are you saved. God's grace, His mercy, His favor is what made salvation available. But by grace are you saved, through faith. My faith becomes active when I do what God says to obey the gospel, and that includes becoming immersed in Christ for the remission of my sins. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. If I hear the word, listen carefully now, if I hear the words of Jesus in Mark 16, 16, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, and I do nothing. Do I have an active saving faith? If I hear the words of 1 Peter 3, 21, baptism does now also save us. And I say, you know, baptism doesn't save. It's not that important. Scripture says it does. Do I have an active, saving faith? When I obey God's plan of salvation, that's the point at which my faith becomes effective and active and is a faith that will glorify and honor God all the days of my life and will bring ultimately the joy and hope that God wants me to have in this life. Now, let's mention this as well. Baptism 
is how we express our faith. It is an expression of faith, motivated by faith. Our faith is embodied in Christ, His death, and His resurrection. Listen to Acts 18.8. Many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed, and were baptized. Do I believe in Christ? Sure I do. Does that belief motivate me by my faith? Absolutely. Our faith motivates us to actually do something which includes obedience to the gospel of Christ. It's how we show, it's how we act upon that belief in obedience to the Lord and His teaching in the New Testament. So faith in action. When one believes in Jesus, that faith is put into action and that action that faith of action demands that we obey God's plan of salvation, including the teaching on baptism. Now, friend, we also want to mention this. In the Bible, another purpose that we find for baptism is it is an act of submission to the will of God. I want to direct your attention to Luke chapter 7, and I want you to look in verses 29 and 30 with me. This is probably one of the more overlooked verses in the Bible about baptism, and I want you to look in Luke chapter 7, <clears throat> look in verse number 29 with me. The Bible says, And when all the people heard Him, heard Jesus, even the tax collectors justified God, having been baptized with the baptism of John. Now notice this, But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the will of God for themselves, not having been baptized by Him. A, listen carefully. A failure to obey God's teaching on baptism is an out-and-out -out rejection of God Himself. That being true, when I submit to baptism, I am submitting to God. I am submitting to the authority of Christ, and I am submitting to the Father of our souls who will ultimately determine our destiny based on the gospel teaching of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Friend, we also mentioned that as a purpose of baptism, we also express repentance to God when we follow through with God's commands to be baptized. It's no little incidental idea that repentance and baptism are directly tied together. Remember Acts 2.38? Repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. I repent and then I'm baptized. If I truly repent, if I truly say to God, I'm going to turn from sin, I'm sorrowful for my sin, I'm going to turn from it, I'm going to live my life for you. What's naturally the next thing to follow? Expressing that repentance by obeying God's plan of salvation, following that up by being immersed in water for the remission of sins to commit myself to Jesus Christ each and every day. Now, I understand that repentance is prior to baptism, and it's also essential. Luke 3, verse 6, John said to certain Jewish elite who came out, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bring forth fruits worthy of repentance. If a person's not willing to repent, he's not ready to be baptized. But once we do repent, we must follow that up by submitting to God's plan of salvation in baptism into our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so that we can have the hope and joy of salvation. Now, let's also mention that another purpose of baptism, when we're baptized, this is how we gladly receive God's Word into our lives. Not, this is not, baptism is not just lip service. It's not just saying, you know, I'm going to pay lip service to Christ and I'm going to do this because I can go out and say that. No, when we obey God's plan of salvation, we gladly receive His Word into our life and we're ready to live for Him. How do we know that? Look in your Bible, if you would, to Acts chapter 2. And I want you to notice what the Scripture says in verse number 41. Now the context is, they've just heard they killed the Messiah. They're now ready to obey God's plan of salvation. Men and brethren, what shall we do? The answer is, repent and be baptized. Now those who did that, what did they do? Look in Acts 2 verse 41. Then those who gladly received His word, were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. You know, sometimes I hear people talk as though baptism's an ugly thing, and the teaching about baptism in the Scripture, they demean the idea that, you know, it's for the forgiveness of sins. These people here who heard Peter's words, repent and be baptized for the remission of their sins, when they obeyed God's plan of salvation, they gladly received that. What's that mean? 
there's a way of salvation. There's a way we can overcome sin. There's joy, there's hope, there's peace, there's forgiveness. They gladly received that word and they were baptized. Friend, those today who were looking to please God and not men, they gladly receive God's word about baptism and they don't just pay it lip service, they really appreciate and understand the joy of becoming a child of God. A another purpose for baptism in the New Testament is it's the proper response to hearing the good news about the kingdom of Jesus Christ. I want you to turn in your Bible just a few more pages to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, I want you to look in verse number 12. The Bible says, But when they believed Philip, as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Alright, now when we hear about the kingdom, which is the church, when we hear that there's a Savior, His name is Jesus, He'll save His people from their sins, Matthew 1, verse 19 through 21. When we hear the, the power of the gospel, that, that Jesus saves, that God wants all men to be saved, that you can come to know Him, receive forgiveness of sins, and that you can be a child of God and have the hope of heaven. When I hear that, and when I hear about the church, and Christ being the head, and there being one body, and that church being God saved today, what's the proper response to hearing about Christ and His kingdom? Listen again to Acts 8 verse 12 as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. If I'm going to respond properly to God's message about His Son and His kingdom and His salvation, friend, I need to respond in submission to the will of God and the teaching of Christ our Lord and Savior. Friend, another very important purpose of baptism that we find in the New Testament that is often so overlooked is this. Baptism, it's how you call on the name of the Lord. Now, let me preface this with some of the false teaching that we sometimes find today. Sometimes I'll hear people say that all you've got to do to be saved is call on the name of the Lord. And by that they mean this. They mean all you've got to do is say, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior and I ask you to now come into my life. In essence, to say the sinner's prayer. Don't get me wrong, the Bible says in Acts 2 verse 21, whoever calls on the name of the Lord to be saved, but friend, wouldn't we be best to let God tell us what it means to call on the name of the Lord? Does calling on the name of the Lord just mean looking up into heaven and saying the name of Jesus? Well, I know it doesn't mean that. For Jesus said in Matthew 7 21, not everybody who looks up into heaven and says, Lord, Lord's going there. But he who does the will of the Father, does calling on the name of the Lord mean saying some scripted prayer, a sinner's prayer that maybe Billy Graham started? Well, you don't find that in the Bible. Let's let the Bible teach us what it means to call the name of the Lord correctly. Would you look in your Bible in Acts chapter 22, verse 16, and I want you to see from the Scriptures that being baptized into Christ for the remission of sins is how you call on the name of the Lord Scripturally, Acts 22, at the conversion of Saul, Ananias now comes to him, and here's what he says to Saul. And now, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins. Watch this now. Calling on the name of the Lord. What does it mean to call the name of the Lord? Ananias told Saul exactly what it meant. Get up and be baptized and wash away your sins, having called on the name of the Lord. It's very simple, my friend. When God makes a plan of salvation, when God provided the blood of Jesus, when forgiveness of sin is offered, and God sets the terms of pardon, then I call on the name of correctly by saying, Lord, I need saving. God says, here's what I've got for you to be saved, and I get up and do that. I've called on the name of the Lord correctly when I obey God's plan of salvation, which includes baptism, to have one's sins washed away. And so, don't buy into the idea that some are saved. You just say the name Jesus and you're saved. Don't buy into the idea of the sinner's prayer, which you don't even find anywhere in Scripture, like some are saying today. Calling on the name of the Lord, according to the Scripture, letting the Bible define its own terms, means that we obey God 
concerning baptism and have our sins washed away just like Saul did in Acts chapter 22, verse number 16. Friend, a very clear and powerful teaching that we find on baptism in the Scripture is that baptism is how one accesses the death of Christ. Now, let me ask you this. Can you be saved without the death of Jesus? Without the blood of Christ, is there forgiveness? Absolutely not. Jesus said, this is my blood of the new covenant shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. Now, if it's true that we must have the death and the blood of Jesus, when do I contact Jesus' death and blood? Whenever, whenever it is. That's when I can know I'm saved, right? Look in your Bible and let's see. Romans chapter 6, I want to direct your attention to verse number 1 through 4. That's Romans 6 verses 1 through 4. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were, watch this, as were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into His death? Therefore, we were buried with Him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. The death of Christ, the blood of Christ saves. There's no doubt about that. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. Hebrews 9 verse 22. When does the Word of God say, I access the death and the blood of Jesus? Romans 6 verses 2 through 4. We're baptized into His death, we're buried with Him into the sacrifice Christ made. Friend, listen carefully. If the Bible teaches at the point of baptism, I access the soul-saving blood of Jesus and His death, then baptism is not an insignificant matter. Baptism is not a non-essential. Baptism isn't just the outward sign of an inward grace. Baptism is essential to reaching the death of Jesus, which everyone believes is for the salvation of our souls. Now friend, let's also realize that baptism, the, listen carefully now, I don't want you to miss this point. I hear so many people say, baptism's not essential, baptism doesn't save, you don't have to be baptized to go to heaven. And I even hear sometimes people say, baptism does not save. And sometimes people say, well, you know, we've heard what you said on all this, but, you know, the Bible never says baptism saves. Friend, did you know that God explicitly says baptism saves? Now, don't, don't, don't misunderstand what we're saying. If God says in the Bible baptism saves, and He does, how dare we say baptism's not essential? Let me show you from your own copy of the Bible. Would you look in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 21? That's 1 Peter chapter 3. I want you to look in verse number 21 with me. The Bible says there is also an anti-type, don't miss this, which now saves us. Baptism. Not the removal of the filth of flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God through the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, look at it again. Does that verse say, Baptism now saves us. Well, in clear, explicit language, it says exactly that. Friend, if that's true, then every person who teaches baptism doesn't save, every person who teaches baptism isn't essential, is teaching something contrary to the Scriptures. Second question, if God wanted to make it any clearer that a person has to be baptized to go to heaven, could he do it any clearer than 1 Peter 3.21? Baptism does now also save us. If God says baptism saves, how dare any person in direct contradiction to the Word of God say that it doesn't save? Friend, we want to make sure that it, we also realize that from this verse, baptism is how you answer with a good conscience. The Bible says again in 1 Peter 3, 21, baptism does now also save us, not the washing away the filth of flesh, not as though we're cleaning sin off our body. What is baptism? The answer of a good conscience. 
What's part of the purpose of baptism? It's how I answer with a good conscience. What's the conscience? A conscience is just simply an echo of the knowledge we provided. If I read the Bible and I see that the Scripture says baptism saves, I answer with a good conscience by obeying the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Friend, as we think today about these purposes of baptism, I know some of these things we've taught today may be different. Maybe you never heard some of these verses. Maybe the things you were taught are different than what you've heard today. Our challenge is simply this. All we ask of you is for you to get your own copy of the Bible. Just as we've looked at it today in our own Bibles, we just ask you to take what you've heard today, your own copy of the Bible, read those verses, study those teachings, and friend, if those things are true, obey them because God said so. Maybe it's different. Maybe you didn't understand that. Maybe you didn't know what the Bible taught about this. Friend, if that's the case, then you need to be baptized correctly for the remission of your sins so that you can have that hope and joy of living with God forever. Do you understand God's plan of salvation today? Do you realize there is a Savior? His name is Jesus, and He can save His people from their sins. Matthew 1, verses 19 through 21. Do, do, do you realize He lived that perfect life? Hebrews 4, verse 15. He gave His life as a sacrifice for sin on the cross and, and died there on a cruel death so that I could have the hope of heaven. 1 Peter 2, verse 24. Are you willing to really believe in Him as the Lord? and the Savior, Acts 8, verse 36 through 38. Would you change your life? Turn to God, turn from sin, and turn to God, Acts 3, verse 19. Would you make that good confession before men, Matthew 10, verse 32 and 33. And friend, would you be baptized to be saved for the remission of sins and to obey God, 1 Peter 3, 21, Mark 16, 16, and Acts 10, verse 48. If you've never done that, Friend, we want you to know God loves you. We love you, and more than anything, we want you to obey God and ultimately go to that beautiful place called heaven. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your walk. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study material, as well as video and audio from our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form. You can also reach us by emailing mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call us at 844-6-GOSPEL or write to us at the address on your screen. You can also get our Gospel of Christ app on your handheld devices for those on the go. Gospel of Christ.